Good evening and welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle with your host Kilu Nyasha and Stephen Leader Engineering. My guest tonight is AIM West Director Antonio Gonzalez, who has coordinated community outreach, research and documentation for the American Indian Movement for 12 years. As UN Liaison Officer, Tony coordinated Treaty Council uh, as a participant at the Un United Nations Commission on Human Rights in Geneva for many years and worked with the UN Working Group on Indigenous Populations to complete the Universal Declaration on the Rights and Principles of Indigenous Peoples. A, a 2007 document that will establish a standard for countries to coexist with its native population. He has also met with world leaders to discuss indigenous sovereignty, environmental degradation, religious freedom, torture, and political persecution. As a Vietnam combat veteran, Tony lived the horror of war and was inspired to work for human rights. He is committed to building unity among indigenous peoples of all colors by emphasizing their shared history and common vision for the future. Welcome to Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Tony Gonzalez. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here, especially since this is the weekend of the celebration, uh, or which should not even be a celebration, of Columbus Day. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about um, the American Indian Movement West, first off. and mm -hmm. Thank you. In, in the American Indian Movement West, we're based here in San Francisco and uh, affiliated with the American Indian Movement out of uh, uh, Minnesota, up in the Minneapolis area. And uh, by the way, people can go to that website, aside from ours that is posted on your screen here, and that would be www.aimovement.org. AIMovement.org. And uh, 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 basically uh, what we're attempting to do uh, is uh, uh, help uh, rejuvenate and recreate uh, uh, the activism among the Indian communities in the urban uh, communities that we find ourselves in and uh, work on issues that uh, many times are not being addressed uh, by the broader uh, support of the progressive uh, movements or liberal movements for that matter. Many issues of Indian people oftentimes uh, or more often than not uh, seem to fall uh, to the wayside uh, uh, even to the extent that society somehow or somewhat accepts this uh, type of uh, racism I have to be uh, blunt and about marginalization. that marginalization and I the institutional racism such as uh, what we witness uh, yearly with this uh, Columbus Day uh, that we're going to talk about uh, uh, later in, in your program, but it, it, that really should be called a culture clash day. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, in trying to uh, 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 activate the, the communities and, and uh, bring all the sacred colors of the two-legged uh, together in the sacred, sacred hoop of life, as we refer to it, uh, with the red people, uh, the black people, the white people, and the yellow people, uh, uh, symbolic number uh, colors that we, we refer to, perhaps in political terms, but to to uh, you know designate the peoples of, of the sacred uh, mother of the earth. But the institutional racism that I referred to, uh, such as what we find uh, commonly in sports today, we see baseball and a lot of football and uh, like the Washington Redskins, for no, example. Just... That, uh, Kula, is like the N-word uh, oh, for yes. Indian people, oh, of uh, indigenous peoples here uh, in North America, and indeed uh, uh, I know we'd have a fit the if they called uh, a team Blackskins. I mean, exactly. any and, group would have a fit. And uh, just on that, as institutional racism, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, accepted. And uh, to the extent to where we as Indian people are referred to in those uh, circumstances, mm -hmm. but uh, more as 
uh, a mere entertainment and we shouldn't be offended by it because it's entertainment. And we say, well, you know, offend somebody else or, or honor somebody else with those terms, but it does, it's not, it's not uh, fitting or respectful, you know, And they know it because um, um, this has been an issue among uh, the indigenous peoples for how, centuries oh, now, yeah, a for, long, long time. Not well, decades in decades terms of, now in uh, terms of the sports. In metaphor. terms of uh, yeah. the sports and, and hopefully that'll be coming to a head. Uh, the Supreme Court may be hearing a, uh, a, uh, a case that refers to mascots in sports, but we were out here uh, with the uh, when the Oakland A's were playing the the Cleveland Indians. Uh, you know, last September 19, right. we were out there at the Coliseum, and in May here in the Bay Area in San Francisco, we were uh, protesting against the Atlanta Braves. Right. Uh, you know, some yeah. of us were out there holding it down, and and we're educating our people to stand up and challenge uh, these injustices. These uh, racist and derogatory uh, right. uh, gestures like the tomahawk chop and the woo-woo singing in the stadiums, you know. Uh, but uh, we have to take time to address those as, as insignificant as some people in society uh, uh, think. Even the Governor Schwarzenegger, uh, three years ago, he vetoed a legislative bill that would have uh, uh, prohibited uh, or banned any further uh, use of mascots in indigenous peoples or any other in in sports but he he uh, vetoed uh, the bill and said Why does uh, that not surprise something me? to the effect that uh, uh, you must be kidding or this is uh, nothing to be taken serious about and that's how he of he uh, Push well, that off, we, we but this is the, the uh, everyday uh, insult, t insults, and racism mm -hmm. that uh, that we're subjected to, and yet uh, we stand up for treaties and protecting uh, the the uh, agreements and and other constructive arrangements that Indigenous peoples have made with this government, for example, uh, and uh, we can't be taken seriously if we're referred to as jokes or entertainment or right. clowns as, and mascots, but we have these treaties that are very much ingrained in the Constitution, that treaties are the supreme law of the land. And this government has violated virtually every treaty that it has made uh, with Indian people. And and this is and it why we're... To and it continues to violate And this is why we have to, like Leonard Peltier, who's been sitting in prison now for 33 years, we have to take up what 